Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, my name is Al-Muhid and I will teach you something about SHM today and I will try to prove it that the motion of a simple pendulum is SHM. What is SHM? SHM basically is an abbreviation of the term simple harmonic motion. What is simple harmonic motion? Number one, it should be a vibratory motion. And what is a vibratory motion? Vibratory motion, I think, is number one, to and fro, about a mean position. And number two is periodic. These two motion makes a body vibrating. Every vibrating motion is periodic, but every periodic motion is not vibrating. Like the motion of the earth is periodic, but it is not vibratory. Simple harmonic motion. Number one, vibrating. Number two, during this vibratory motion, the acceleration of the body must be directed towards mean position. And number three, the magnitude of acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement of the body from mean position. And what is the best idea to learn this is to check out the motion of a simple pepper which should be, which should fulfill all these two, three conditions that the motion of a simple pendulum must be vibratory, means it must be to and fro and periodic. And number two, the acceleration of the body must be directed towards the mean position and the acceleration of the body executing simple harmonic motion must be directly proportional to the displacement. Directly proportional means, I will show it to you. How I can show it to you by taking a simple pendulum? It is a rigid support. In physics, this term represented rigid support. And this is a very small mass of a string and very small mass of metallic ball. And this arrangement makes it simple pendulum. And I am going to show you that this simple pendulum has a motion which is called SHA. Very interesting to know that this position is called a mean position. In this mean position, a very good question arises that why this bulb is hanging out there? The answer is very fair. Okay, since the mass of this is M, so it's Weight is mg here, weight is the force. If this force is here, it must accelerate in this direction, according to the Newton's second law. But it, since it is not accelerating, it means that there must be a force in the upward direction. And that force is nothing but the tension in the string. And this tension and the weight must be balanced to each other. And since they are balanced, why they are balanced? Because if I find the sum of both, it will be zero. And according to the Newton's second law of motion, that is F is equal to MA, this is the net force, which is zero. And this force is like this, net force. 
And now this force is zero, so MA is zero. And when MA is zero, the product of two is zero, the mathematics says either both of them are zero or at least one of them is zero. Mass says I cannot be zero, so the acceleration says I must be zero. And acceleration is nothing but the rate of change in velocity is zero. If the acceleration of the body says, maximum student says, the body will be at rest. I do not agree with this. The body will be at rest if your acceleration is zero. Number one, the body at rest will remain at rest, but the main idea is that the body in motion will keep it uniform motion forever. Since it is hanging, so it will remain hanging, and that is the case that the ball will still hang. I will just rub it out to extend my idea about SHM. When I displace this pendulum to this position, here comes the key points. Where will be the mg weight of the body? It will be still hanging vertically. This will be the weight mg. In your books, the theta is not mentioned, but I hope you will learn that. And just by having a little bit of mathematics, you will say, if this is theta, then this is an alternate angle, which is again theta. Two parallel lines cut each other, alternate angles must be congruent. And if I extend this line with the black one, wow. And if I make it like this, then you will see that this, if this is theta, this is a vertical angle, this must be a theta, and this must be 90, and the component of a vector beneath this must be an x component of the vector as you have learned in the class 9. This must be, if this is mg, this must be mg cos theta, and the component of the vector opposite to the theta must be mg sin of theta. You have learned in the last ninth the resolution of the vector, but I hope your teacher would be unable to tell you what is this all about. And what is that? I will try my best to make you learn. If this is f, and if this is theta, in all the books and all the teachers says, okay, this is a component, f cos theta, and this is rectangular components f sine of theta. But in my humble opinion, and this is had to tell you these two joints to form this. And this is a resolution. This is splits out in this idea is already the same. But if the body is here, if it is the body, then you will see the force is acting on the body, F is acting on the body. F sine of theta, F cos theta is acting on the body, but F sine of theta does not look like to be acting on the body, very common point. And you must learn this, that this F sine of theta is nothing, not here, it should be here. Why it is here? It is only here to show the head to tail rule, but it always it is here. So mg sine of theta is not here mg sine of theta is actually here. So why it is shown here? It is only there to justify it had to table. Only here. Because if it is here, there is no body here. And the forces cannot be acted on the air. It should be acted on the body. So here, these are the things which are not being mentioned in the books. And these are the key points for you to learn. This is the body. This is, and now mg is gone. mg is gone. Why? 
because it has been resolved into its rectangular component, one of which is mg cos theta and the other is mg sin of theta. And the third one will be the tension. I will call this tension not T, I will call it T dash, something other than this. Why this is very simple to say. Here this tension is balancing the whole weight and here this tension is balancing a component of the weight which is called the empty column called the theta. So this tension must be lesser than this tension. And this tension is the maximum because it is balancing the whole weight. <coughs> what these two forces mg cos theta and t dash does. They always balance each other. This must balance this. Why? Because if they are not going to balance themselves, the pendulum is going to move along this or along this. But when we release this pendulum, it goes towards this. It means that t dash and mg cos of theta are balancing each other. So only when they balance each other to the down and up, the only component of the force acting on the pendulum will be mg sine of theta. And this force is according to the Newton's second law, I is equal to ma, but now here the force is mg sine of theta. And then we, being a student of science, we, these, we analyze these two equations, you will say, okay, ma must be balanced by mg sine of theta, and our next response will be mg and mg will balance each other, so acceleration is g sine of theta. There is no evidence in the book to show you that the magnitude of the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement of the body from the mean position. You must check it out. But here, a is equal to g naught sine of theta tells us that g is constant, so only variable is theta. Here my theta is maximum. And all of you must know that theta and sine theta are directly proportional. As theta increases, sine theta increases. As theta decreases, sine of theta decreases. You can check it out from your calculator. Sine of zero is zero. Sine of 90 is one. So it increases. Here your theta is maximum. Here it is called your extreme position. At your extreme position, the theta is maximum. I do not know whether it is 30, 45 or 60, but it is maximum. Because this is my extreme position. Why this is my extreme position? Because when I am going to release this ball, it will go like this. And what will happen? Theta will decrease. So at extreme position, Your theta is maximum. So is the sine of theta is maximum. So is the g sine of theta, which is acceleration, is maximum. And that is the beauty of physics that theta being maximum here makes the acceleration as maximum. In your book, I have just uh, read it out that they have uh, given the other justification, which in my opinion is uh, not beautiful. So theta here is maximum, so is sine of theta. He says A is G sine of theta, G is constant. So G sine of theta, sine of theta increases, theta increases, sine of theta decreases, A decreases. So here your acceleration will be maximum. Acceleration is maximum. And now when I will release it, what will happen? It will go towards the mean position. So what will happen? Theta will decrease. So is the sine theta will decrease. So is the g sine of theta will decrease. So is acceleration is decrease. So from the extreme position to the mean position, acceleration decreases. 
this means that here extreme position the distance is maximum so is the acceleration maximum and when it goes down theta decreases what happens at the mean position at mean position what do you think of this this ball will be here and when it will be here theta will be zero and when theta will be zero implies that sine of zero is zero so g which is sorry a which is g sine of theta zero is zero here so acceleration is zero here acceleration is maximum here it means that i have proved it here that the acceleration of the body executing simple harmonic motion i haven't yet proved that theta is maximum here decreases 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 goes to zero no doubt here the velocity is zero but acceleration is maximum here the acceleration is zero but the velocity will be maximum i will uh, prove it as the time passes when it will pass through the mean position on the other side what will happen theta will be reduced from zero to some extent so acceleration will increase 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 till the pendulum goes on the other way or if the theta this is theta again if equivalent to this theta then here the acceleration will again be maximum because we have read it out that the acceleration depends upon theta as the theta increases sine of theta increases sine of theta increases g sine of theta increases and so is a when it will come back it will again lose theta and it will again acceleration will be down when it will come back acceleration will be zero here why because sine of zero is zero this is what i have tried to prove that the magnitude of the acceleration is directly proportional as i go away from theta the uh, mean position my theta increases so my sine of theta increases so g sine of theta increases so a increases and i if i come back my theta i lose my theta i decrease my theta so is i decrease my sine of theta and hence i decrease my so this is one of the point that the direction of uh, the, the magnitude of the acceleration uh, must be directly proportional from the mean position what next the acceleration must be directed towards the mean position there is no evidence in your book you must read read it out there is no evidence as far as my opinion is concerned but in my humble opinion what it says the direction of acceleration must be towards the mean position agar main yahan se yahan hu tab bhi ye acceleration and if i goes like this tab bhi ye acceleration if i goes like this then acceleration is this acceleration is always directed towards the mean position how can we prove that is a difficult task but i will try my level best to make you know that acceleration is directed towards the mean position 